Hello there, my fellow Sigmar-fearing citizens of the Empire, and welcome back to another Warhammer Fantasy lore video. Even though this particular series doesn't get a lot of views, I am still fairly determined to eventually cover all the provinces of the Empire. Now, since we already talked about Averland, Ostland, and Wissenland, I thought it would be a nice idea to talk about a more famous region today. And what region is more prestigious than the capital province of Reichland? I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? Reichland is the seat of imperial power, and the richest, most cosmopolitan province in all the Empire. And not just because the Reichlanders say so, as you're gonna find out today. The Reichland can be roughly divided into three main regions. The towering grey mountains forming the province's southwestern border, the fertile foothill region of the Vorbergland, and the dense Reichwald forest. The two main passes over the grey mountains are the Axebite Pass and the Grey Lady Pass. The passes are guarded by the imperial fortresses of Helmgard and Ubertreich respectively both built as defenses against both human and non-human raiders living in the mountains. Another of their roles is to keep an eye on the Bretonians, with whom relations have not always been friendly. The snows of winter close both passages on a regular basis, and travelers are heavily advised to cross them only after the spring thaw. Because they are so heavily tolled, some merchants attempt to take more rugged routes, such as the Crooked Corridor or the Durak Way. Nevertheless, such undertakings are very dangerous. Located between the Reichwald and the Grey Mountains is a region of rolling hills and fertile valleys, known as the Vorbergland, which also means Foothills Country. The southeastern part of the region, known as Suden Vorbergland, is the most fertile region in the Reichland. Market towns like Ubersreich, Stimmigen, or Dunkelberg have grown up around these plentiful agricultural areas. Southern Vorbergland is also known as Renault's Garden, because of the large amount of wine that it produces. However, the western end of the Vorbergland is much less densely populated, and suffers from very frequent greenskin raids. Inhabited by many animals and monsters, it is a popular destination for big game hunters and scholars from the Imperial Zoo. The many rivers that flow from the Grey Mountains into the Reich are very important for agriculture in the Vorbergland. The dwarves of the Grey Mountains have in the past used this to their advantage, damming the rivers during a serious dispute with the Elector Counts over mining rights in 2211 IC. This has led to the infamous Rantwater March of the Peasants on Altdorf. Since then, the electors and the emperors have been ever careful to keep the dwarves of the Grey Mountains as happy as they can. Although Reichland's forests are generally safer than those in the other provinces, it is still unwise to travel far from the rivers and roads cutting into the forest. Groups of bandits and wild animals make their home beneath the bows of the Reichwald and the deeper one goes into the forest, the viler the creatures they will encounter. Within the Reichwald forest are two sets of hill country, the Hager Cribs and the Skog Hills. Both are used for sheep herding and mining, and the Hager Cribs are also popular with tomb robbers and other adventurers looking for burial sites of the pre-imperial Unberogans. There's also reports of ghost hauntings in the Haber Cribs, but these are usually dismissed as the ravings of drunk shepherds. From north to south, from the edge of the wastelands to the borders of Wissenland, Reichland is blessed with a bounty of resources. The mines of the Grey Mountains yield valuable ores ranging from iron to gold, as well as marble and precious gems, while the Reichwald forest yields valuable timber supporting a thriving boat-building industry. The emperors, who have always been the elector counts as well of the Reichland ever since Wilhelm overthrew Dieter in the 25th century, have lavished imperial largesse on their home province. Canals, road building, programs to improve the farming output, development of free towns and the mercantile classes, all of these have served to make Reichland a gem among the imperial provinces. 
River travel is the most common way to get around Reichland, since the majority of the settlements are along the River Reich itself. Several tributaries flow from the Grey Mountains to add their waters to the Reich, which carries commerce from the interior of the Empire all the way to Marienburg and beyond. The Reichland has a feudal government. Its ruler is the Grand Prince of Reichland, an elector count of the Empire. The current Grand Prince is Karl Franz, who is also the Emperor. His powers as the Grand Prince of Reichland include the ability to raise emergency taxes in times of crisis, the authority to mint coins, the right to call a high steward's court, and the position as Commander-in-Chief of Reichland's armies should he choose so. Any decree outside of these powers must be ratified by the Reichland Diet. The lands ruled by these vassals are known as the Reichland Estates. Meanwhile, many of the day-to-day -day duties of the Grand Prince are handled by the members of the Reichland Council. This council is composed of ten members, also known as the High Lords of the Reichland. They are appointed by the Grand Prince, and each one handles a specific field with the Grand Prince himself seldomly attending. The composition of the Reichland Council is as follows. The High Lord of the Chair, who is the official head of the Reichland Council, the Lord High Steward, who has exclusive rights to judge a member of the Reichland Diet, the High Lord Treasurer, who is responsible for Reichland's treasury and revenue, the High Lord Ambassador, who is responsible for Reichland's foreign affairs and is also the head of the Altdorf Black Chamber spy network, the High Lord Judge Supreme, who is the highest authority of Reichland law, the High Lord Chancellor, who is the spiritual advisor and the overseer of the Reichland Chancery and Silver Seal, the High Lord Chamberlain, who is responsible for running the Imperial Palace and the Volkschale, the High Lord Reichsmarshal, who is responsible for leading Reichland state armies, the High Lord Constable, who is the supreme authority on genealogy and heraldry, and the High Lord Admiral, who is responsible for running Reichland's navy. The Reichland Diet is composed of all the Grand Prince's direct vassals. Whenever he wishes to make a decree, they look it over, and either pass it or return it to him with suggested amendments. Most of the Lords of the Reichland are too busy handling affairs at home to attend the meetings of the Reichland Diet, which are held in the Holzkrug Chamber of the Volkschale. Instead, they send representatives to most of the sessions, and these may be children, spouses, or particularly trusted minions. The Reichland Estates are those parcels of land which had been granted to the Grand Prince's vassals. The precise nature of the feudal contract varies from estate to estate, but all are required to maintain at least one regiment for Reichland state armies. The biggest of the vassals have further subdivided their land, carving out a new fiefs and granting them to family or allies. The creation of a new hereditary title requires the consent of the Reichland Diet, but non-hereditary positions may be created at the estate holder's discretion. The Reichlanders are the descendants of the fierce Unberogans, a tribe of warriors which saw the lands unified under their king Sigmar during the founding years of the empire. At their best, the Reichlanders are friendly, sociable, and open-minded, more so than the rest of the empire. Reichlanders are optimists who believe that the very best is yet to come. They point out several reasons for this. The natural bounty of their lands, educated and energetic population, and the fact that the mighty Sigmar was one of them. They take a keen interest in the affairs of the other provinces, and often point out that something should be done when terrible fates befall a neighbor. Robust supporters of the military, many young Reichland nobles enter the army to make their name and fortune. Considered a natural officer material, the chances of advancement are considerably better for those of Reichlander birth. The Reichlanders always answer a call to arms in large numbers, and feel that it is their duty to come to the aid of those less fortunate in the Empire. Fashion plays an important role in the Reichlanders' social life, more so than any other province. The peasantry, of course, cares very little for such fripperies, but among the growing middle classes, the correct sleeves, shoes and colors are matters of great importance. 
The nobility tend to set the fashion for one season, leaving it to the merchant and other grubby tradesmen to copy their styles as fast as they can. The presence of the imperial court has only served to exacerbate such tendencies. Recent vogues have included Bretonian styles, the new rustic, and most recently a return to simple militaristic clothing. At their worst, Reichlanders are arrogant, overbearing, and drunken slaves to fashion. Notorious for their ability to celebrate at the drop of a hat, the image of the beribboned Reichland sot is a popular stereotype among the rest of the empire. Many provinces are suspicious of the fashionable, cosmopolitan nature of the Reichland men, claiming that they are effeminate for caring so much about what they wear. Curiously, they also have a reputation as wife-stealing philanderers. More than one Telebeckland husband has found his woman seduced by the charming words and dashing look of a Reichlander dandy. Reichland women, meanwhile, are known for their beauty, as well as their unbearably vain personality. Loud, outspoken, and often smug about the imagined superiority of their opinions, Reichlanders are traditionally known to be controlling and strongly opinionated. The Reichlander tendency to want to finish a task as fast as possible and then come home is well known. Although they honor all the gods, Reichlanders generally see Sigmar as their special patron, for he was technically born there. Other popular deities are Dyrath, a regional name for Raya, whom Reichlanders of Vorbergland honor as the goddess of fertility, and Shalia, whose temples and hospices are frequent recipients of gifts and bequests of the wealthy Reichlanders. Although tolerated and formally respected, the cult of Ulrich is not popular in Reichland. That's because of the old age rivalry between the Church of Sigmar and the cult of Ulrich. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Imperial Province of Reichland for today. As you probably know already, if you're a Warhammer Fantasy fan, they are quite arrogant and tend to think that they know better than the others. However, some of their boasts come from a place of truth, as they are indeed a very strong and wealthy region. What are your thoughts on the Reichland and the Reichlander natives? Are you a fan of this province, or do you prefer something else? Let us all know what you think in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.